feel like we gotta we should have been more aggressive. I feel like on the third down and six, third down and seven, we playing a backup quarterback. Why would you put us in man to man? You know, why why not get our we are our, we are our best on defense when we look at the quarterback. When you go one high on a backup quarterback, that's easy, man. They gonna go backside every time. You feel me? Like you know what I'm saying? It's a bad call. I think it was a horrible call, but I feel like you don't put you don't put Fabian in that situation in a backup quarterback. Regardless of the call, yeah, the ball was overthrown. But I feel like, man, if we look at the quarterback with all this talent we got in the back end, man, we could dominate every team every week, man. But I'm not the D coordinator, bro. So. What's good, people? And you know, I had to come on real quick and make a video as I was thumbing around on the internet um, just a little while ago came across this tweet and found out that the Redskins had released DJ Swearinger now where do I start I was actually expecting Swearinger to get suspended for the last game I figured that Gruden would try to send a message to the rest of the locker room and the rest of people in the building that um, talking bad about the coaches was going to get you nowhere. I figured that's what we were up against. You know, Swearinger is a team guy. I will say that he needs he needs to shut his mouth a little bit when it comes to in the media. He's definitely probably should work on keeping things in-house. I mean, this is in fact his fifth team in his sixth or was it six year career? Maybe seven. This might be a seventh year. I, I'm, not, I'm not certain. I think it's six, though. He's never spent more than two seasons anywhere. Now, to get called into the coach's office on Christmas Eve and cut is extreme. You know, and and I'm I'm just trying to kind of go through just how this looks on the outside because. People that are not Redskin fans probably think this is the stupidest thing ever. I mean, we signed Reuben Foster after he's arrested, which, hey, I even said could prove to be a good move if Foster doesn't get convicted. But we sign him, and then Mason Foster comes out and supposedly calls the fans out, even admits to it a couple days later. It was in a private message, but we don't find him. We don't suspend him a game. We don't make him sit out any time during the game. And then we cut DJ Swearinger on Christmas Eve. Who does this? If this isn't a scream to the rest of the NFL community that we need to fire our GM, nothing is. Daniel Snyder, if you love this football team, fire Bruce Allen now. It's pretty obvious that this is a call coming from above. Now, the reason I say that is, is that Gruden has been the biggest pushover, shove around coach that we've ever had in the history of this team. And that's saying something. And now he's going to, he's going to kick this guy off the team now. I don't believe he made that choice on his own. I believe he was told to do that by his boss, the man above him, the one that needs to see the door. Now, Effectively, what this does is tells us that Jay Gruden will be back next year. That's what this does effectively. I mean, it's it's getting pretty clear now. There's no way he would have been trotted into that into that room to fire, basically, that player if he's going to get fired next Monday. And if that happens, holy shit, this organization is worse than I thought. But let me look at a few things because he because uh, Swearinger went over to 106. Point seven, the fan, of course, like everybody always does when um, when they have issues with the team. But he had a few comments I'm going to get to in a second. But first of all, let's look at this. The team now will have to access a 5.666 dead cap uh, hit on the salary cap. He was signed for another two years. And keep in mind, he had four interceptions and like three or four forced fumbles this year. I believe he recovered one of them. He's an alternate for the Pro Bowl. Now, he has called out coaches and players multiple times this year. 
And as I mentioned a little while ago, this is his fifth team, and I believe his sixth or seventh season. He's never spent more than two years anywhere. So it's pretty easy to see where the problem lies with this guy because he actually plays pretty good on the field. But he has a mouth. Now, it's obvious Gruden asked him to keep it in-house at least twice. You know, and, and it's also pretty obvious that Gruden was showing his flexing power with this move. Now, I don't know if he was if he was told to show the power or what's going on here, but I definitely know that somebody told him to release Swearinger. Somebody walked into his office and said, you know what, to hell with suspended him for a game. Get him out of here. I don't really know why the team wouldn't try to trade him. Why don't you just keep the issues in-house, try to trade him? He is a, alter, a Pro Bowl alternate, which means he's good enough to gather probably at least a draft pick from somewhere. Um, but I got a few quotes, a few things he said. One question I immediately had, well, if he goes to the Pro Bowl, which one helmet will he wear? Well, he said on 106.7 The Fan that if he goes to the All-Star game, he would wear South Carolina apparel if he's not claimed by a team. He'll probably be claimed by somebody. That's the even crazier part. But his quote, you know, there's something happened during the after the game, after he called out the team, Jonathan Allen, who has already got my vote for next year's defensive captain, period. I don't want anybody else to have that C on his jersey except Jonathan Allen. But Jonathan Allen came out after the game and said that Greg Minuski had called a great game, whereas Swearinger had said that Minuski made bad calls at the end of the game, and it was basically his fault. Now, this is what Swearinger said. He said he's a young player. He doesn't really know about the calls on the back end. He said the right thing. John had a great game, so it makes sense he thought Greg called a great game. There's a little bit lying in there, but he's at least trying to get a man credit and, and, and not trying to, you know, call him out. He went on to say that he thinks he was voted captain by his teammates and the coaches made Mason Foster the captain instead. Uh, I said something about this earlier this year in a video asking why is Mason Foster standing there with a C on his chest. I wondered that. I said that. I wondered. See, what I wondered was, was, was he promised that C from above the coaching staff so he would come back and not go out on free agency. I really wondered that last year. I said something because, you know, he came out and threw a hissy fit after the team put him on IR last year, and he thought he was going to get released, and then all of a sudden he becomes defensive captain. But, you know, obviously I have no proof of, of that, but... He went on to say that uh, it, it was a three-way tie and Foster was named the captain. He says the whole team voted for it, not just the defense. He went on to say uh, the coaches think I'm too smart or I'm a, I'm a weapon with my smarts, so they released me. Um, he also said the practices are too laid back compared to other teams he's been on. said Bruce Arians practiced ten times harder. Um, and and, and he, you know, they had the same rules in practice, by the way. Uh, and Jay Gruden came out and, and issued a, a statement or, or sent a text to one of the one of the, the Washington Post writers. It all, it's the only response they've got so far. His response was, we just thought it was best for both parties. So now the Redskins are not only without Monte Nicholson, Ha Ha Clinton Dix is not that great of a, of a, of a fill-in. At this point, he could learn the... Um, the, the defense better in this offseason and, and have a tremendous turnaround next year. But I don't think learning the system is really going to help picking and choosing the wrong angles. He needs to get back to the basics to do that. Of course, he's still young, so we'll see how that goes. But now we need a new free safety, and we're right back where we were at square one without one. And that bothers me a little bit. It, I, am, I like Swearinger as a player. I was getting a little tired of his mouth this year, so I'm not going to cry over not having to hear his mouth anymore, but this was dumb. This was a bad move by a badly run franchise, and we need to fix this issues this offseason, and we need to start by firing Bruce Allen. It needs to happen. Fix it, Danny Snyder, please. Please. Do the one thing that you need to do that every single fan knows you need to do. And that most people, <laughs> most people that aren't Redskin fans know it now too. That's all I got, man.